Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Nitsen by Deneen podcast. My name is Deneen and this is my very first episode. As I've said before, I'm very excited, very nervous, but I'm excited. I have wanted to make a podcast for a little while now, but I'm just now working up the courage to do it. As you can see, I'm pretty nervous, so bear with me while I work on my very first episode. I will watch this over and improve what needs to be improved. I'm not going to edit out a whole lot because it's a first episode. I feel like you should kind of expect there to be a few bumps and a little bit of awkwardness, but I actually enjoy it. It's a little human touch to it. We're not perfect. Okay, so what I've decided to show first are my works in progress. So, I made a project bag. You can see it's my label on it out of a out of a fabric that I got from Joann's a few years ago when I used to work there. Just now used it last month, I think. <clears throat> and it's storing a project that's probably a little too big to be in this bag, if I'm being honest. It is my drawstring camisole. The pattern is by Pearl Soho, and the yarn that I used is the Loops and Threads Wool Like. And as you can see here, it's knit on circulars. Let me turn it over so you can see. So it's kind of an A shape. It's, it's gonna be drawstring, so you can see the little channels where the drawstrings are gonna go into. And right here where it separates is where it's gonna come out and tie in the back. I really like the idea of knitting a camisole because I'm always hot but I like to knit and so I didn't see I didn't see myself knitting a whole lot of sweaters but I still wanted to knit garments for myself so when I found this pattern I was just so excited and when I found out that it was free I was even more excited and so I knit it and I've done all the difficult parts and it's been sitting in a project bag for months now <laughs> and the reason is that I have so like I think 8 to 12 inches, I can't remember how long because I'm not making it the length that the pattern says, I decided to lengthen it. So I, I can't remember if it's either 8 to 12 inches that I decided I'm going to be knitting in the round and stocking it and that gets so boring. And it's a very light yarn, it's like fingering weight yarn and so it, it's just taken so long. I'm going to finish it, this is not going to be frogged, it's not going to sit on my shelf for more than a year, hopefully, <laughs> but I plan on finishing this camisole and I'm really excited for it to be finished. I'm excited that I will be able to finally wear it and I'm going to feel very accomplished when I finish it because it has taken so long. And there aren't very many projects on Ravelry of this pattern. I'm thinking maybe because the, you know, the yarn is so thin and that other people know that once they get to that stockinette part, they are gonna lose their drive like I did, but I'm going to work through it and see how it goes. So the next project that I'm in the works on is the Mercury Sock by Kim Droder. Drotar. I hope I'm saying that right. Let me put the sock on the blocker so you can see it. So as you can see here, it's I have kind of I have a few holes where I turn the heel, but I actually like that on a lace sock. I think it looks nice. It adds to the laciness, if you will. Um, I haven't started the second sock yet because I was working on a pair of socks that somebody asked me to make for them, and so after I finished this one sock, I used the needles to knit another pair of socks and then another. I'm eventually going to get back to these. I don't have the second sock syndrome. I've just been wanting to make so many different things that sometimes I forget that I need to finish this other sock. I've, I've actually forgotten about it a couple times. But I tried it on. I really like the way it fits. I really like the way it looks. It's a very soft sock. As If you've ever visited my blog or my Instagram, you'll know that I am vegan and I have been trying to phase the wool that I purchased out of my out of my closet and I considered donating it or selling it or giving it away but I would lose out on a lot of money and I'm a student I can't afford to do that 
so I decided that I was just going to use it either to make for gifts or to keep for myself and so this pair of socks is and if you check on my Instagram when I post pictures of things that are named with wool I usually hashtag the last of the wool which means that it's the from one of the last projects that you're going to see of me knitting with wool although I have a lot of wool I've, I have my bedroom has two closets and one of the closets is full of yarn I have one closet that is dedicated to yarn and a lot of it is wool so that, that's why I would lose so much money um, but anyway I'm not just gonna throw it away or donate it or or give it to someone I'm gonna try to use it because I paid for it <laughs> anyway the next project is my 90s dad sock this is, I finished the first sock and I'm working on the second sock. It's in this little drawstring bag that I got from my grandma. It was actually a gift. She put a gift in here, like a little, I think it was a lipstick and um, some candy. But it's the perfect size to carry a sock and a ball of sock yarn. So, and it's really shiny, I love it. You can see it's like this really pretty shiny silver color, I really like it. And anyway, I've been working on my second 90s dad sock. I didn't use a pattern for this. I just kind of measured my ankle and, you know, did the gauge thing and figured out how many stitches I need per inch. And then I came up with my sock. And this yarn is, I think it's, it's Red Heart, Heart and Soul, and the colorway is Bayou. And it's such an, it came out so nice I did not expect it to look like this if you can okay so it's striped red and blue and it's also striped green and black and while it's striping every other row with a color it's also striping these two color combinations if that makes any sense and I call the 90s dad sock because it reminds me of the crazy sweaters that everybody's dad wore in the 90s <laughs> you know what I'm talking about I did a contrasting heel, also using what I had left of the um, Red Heart, Heart and Soul in the color Ivory. And since I, I only have like a tiny ball of it left in the color that, I, I have it in two different dye lots. The other dye lot that I have is a really dark yellow and, and it wouldn't work if I tried to use them in the same pattern unless I alternated them and I didn't want to do that. So to save yarn, I didn't do a contrasting cuff, but I don't mind it. I think it looks nice with just the toe and the heel. This is all I have left of the ivory in this um, dye lot. So, but if you if you look, the reason that it was so shocking to me that it came out that way is that if you look at the yarn, it doesn't look like it would. It would. I did not expect it to knit up like that. I almost didn't think I would like this yarn. I just bought it because. It was cheap and I wanted to practice because at the time I hadn't knit any socks yet. I'd never attempted to knit socks and I didn't want to invest a lot of money if it wasn't something I was going to enjoy. But as you can see here, it you wouldn't even think that this would turn into this. It's so amazing. It's still shocking to me and I really like the way it looks. I Honestly, looking at this, I don't like this. this. These aren't my typical colors. This isn't what I would typically choose for myself. But I really like the way this turned out. It almost reminds me, it also reminds me of like older computers. You know how it was like green and white and black and the lettering like back when, you know, things were like 8-bit and stuff. I really like these socks. Well, this sock. I'm really excited to see how the other one turns out. Because I know the striping isn't going to be exactly the same. So I think it's just going to look really neat. They're going to be sisters, not twins. But that's okay, because I like that in socks sometimes. So, and you'll have to excuse me clearing my throat. I have a little bit of, of allergies. I don't know if you've heard, well, I'm sure you have heard, but you know, um, California, where we've been dealing with a lot of wildfires, and I live really close to a lot of them, and so we've had really bad air quality lately, and everybody's allergies have just been going crazy. So... I'm going to be the stereotypical podcaster that has like a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend got me this mug from Disneyland because Belle is my favorite Disney princess. And so, and it's also, the cool thing about it is that the tea was also Beauty and the Beast. So I have this Beauty and the Beast mug 
and Beauty and the Beast orange tea to go with it, and it's so good. It's an orange cinnamon tea, and it's really helping with my throat. Okay. The next work and project that I have is pretty much almost finished. I don't know why I've let it sit for so long. I knit this little raglan hooded sweater for my mom's friend's son. I started it before he was born. I think he's four or five months now. And I, I can see it still fitting him. It would still fit him. So I'm not concerned about that. But what I plan to do since the baby shower was superhero themed and she and her husband are into superheroes was I was going to duplicate stitch a Batman logo on the back because I thought it would look really nice. The uh, gray, the black, and the yellow. But for some reason I haven't... I don't know. I'm going to work on this soon. I'm going to make it a goal of mine to finish this soon because I really want her to get the sweater. I'm really excited for them to see it. And I knit this in the I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby, which is really soft. I was surprised. It's really soft and really nice. Um, I was trying to avoid buying a lot of acrylic yarn. A lot of, of I should say, Red Heart style, you know, acrylic yarn that doesn't always knit up that well but this actually looks really nice to me it has really nice clean stitches good stitch definition it's kind of it has a little bit of a shine to it I don't know if you can see that it'll focus but it has a decent amount of shine to it and I really I like the way it feels I like the way it looks I think it'd be really soft and nice on the baby's skin and I'm really excited to give them to her because what I I knitted her, I think, a hat and she really liked it. So I'm excited to give her the sweater. <laughs> and my final work in progress is the, excuse me, my pronunciation, N. Eskivian. N. Eskivian. Um, <clears throat> cardigan. It's a shawl collar cabled cardigan that I'm knitting for my boyfriend. This is the front view, right here. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And this is the back view. It's actually been really fun to knit. I haven't knit anything with cables in a long time. I just haven't really been into it. And now I just have like this cable fever where I want to knit cabled socks and cabled cardigans and everything. This is what it's looking like so far and it actually is a lot wider than it looks right here. It's I have it kind of squished on this needle. I could have used a circular needle but I didn't want to. So and and I made actually made gauge with a needle that was a size smaller than what it said. So it said to use size five knitting needle or I mean sorry five millimeter knitting needle but I ended up making gauge with four millimeters so that's what I'm using here. Um, the yarn that I'm using is also the last of the bowl. It's the uh, Patton's Classic Worsted. I think this color is called Chestnut Tweed. And the reason that, well this ended up being perfect. I didn't necessarily buy this for him. Again, I bought this a while ago. But he said he needed more fall colored items in his wardrobe. So this is perfect because it has little specks of yellow and orange and green and the base is brown. So I thought it would be perfect for fall wardrobe. And it's really soft. I, I just love this. I love tweed yarn. All tweed. I rarely see tweed yarns that I don't like. Even in colors like this. I don't usually buy orange, yellow, or green. But I don't know what it is. Just the fact that it's tweed. I really like the way it looks. So here's that. And I haven't had a lot of time to work on this because I am a full-time student. Was taking 15 units, but now I'm down to 12. But I'm still, I'm very busy. It's it's hard for me to knit things that I can't take with me. And that's another reason that I've been putting aside my bigger projects and working on a lot of socks, is because I can take the socks with me. When I'm at school, I can knit in between classes, on the bus, and I actually get a lot of knitting done that way. So, okay, so there are two, such as, no, three items that I finished this month, but, I don't have with me because like they were gifts and so I will try to include pictures of them somewhere around either here or at the end whichever is easier for me because I'm pretty new at this but the first one 
was the uh, Garter Stitch Baby Kimono by Joji Locatelli. It is, it's a really nice pattern. Um, it was a free pattern on Ravelry as well. And I think it came in three different sizes. I think, but it actually, it would have knit up pretty fast. It took me an unreasonably long amount of time to finish that. I don't, it was just the, the person who requested the sweater, she wanted it to be knit in, in lavender. And so we knitted in, in the lavender patterns, um, classic worsted. And then I didn't have enough left over because, you know, the last of the wool, I didn't have enough left over to finish the sweater. So I actually did have to go buy more of it. And it turns out that it had been cleared out and discontinued. So <laughs> I had to, um, I had to order it online from Joann's. It ended up costing $14 because of the shipping. It was on clearance, but with the shipping, it ended up being $14. It took a really long time to get it. And then, and then I, I have a, Every semester I take a PE class or, or an art class, just something to regulate my stress levels so I don't get overwhelmed. So this year I'm taking a beginning basketball class and I have jammed my finger <laughs> twice, no, three times a year. And so that held me back with the knitting. So it seemed like one thing after the other and I kept, I felt bad. I felt like I was making up excuses as to why I wasn't finishing her little baby sweater, but it ended up, I finished it, she liked it, I was really happy the way it turned out, and she was totally understanding with how long it took, which was ridiculous, but it just seemed like the entire universe, <coughs> sorry, it just seemed like the entire universe was against me knitting that sweater, so, <clears throat> and to go with that sweater, I'm sorry, to go with that sweater, I knit a garter stitch hat by Haley Scarpino, I think. Also in the same color yarn, and that one was actually pretty quick, and I could take it with me to school, so that was nice. The baby sweater, because it started out knit in one piece, so the front, the left front, the back, and the right front, <clears throat> all connected up until you got to like the uh, armpit of the sweater so it was a pretty long and it overlaps you know because it's a kimono so it's a pretty long piece of knitting for a long time I couldn't really take it with me in my backpack it was kind of difficult so the hat I could actually finish it pretty quickly because it was you know a portable project that I could put in my bag so I really enjoyed knitting that and the last thing that I don't have with me are the um, vanilla socks that I knit for my boyfriend Johnny and they were knit in the uh, Patton Scroy socks in the color green striped rag those were his very first hand knit socks or hand knit anything that he's ever gotten and so he was really excited about those and the color that I had just happened to match with a lot of the dress shirts that he likes to wear. He's a business major student and so he likes to dress up and button ups and then just the socks really matched his wardrobe. I was pretty lucky because again the yarns I bought them a long time ago just because they were on sale not because I actually had any plans with them and then after I stopped buying wool and all that it was just a really lucky coincidence. So the next section I have is what's new where I want to show off um, I'll not show off, but show you some of the new knitting supplies that I've gotten or knitting items. I don't have acquisitions, you know, I'm very new, so I decided that I would just show you things that I've acquired myself. And whether I like them or not, I actually don't like, don't necessarily like the last things that I've gotten. So I ordered a pair, I mean, ordered a set, a full set of double pointed needles online. They were pretty cheap. I was amazed at how cheap they were. They're aluminum. I, I know a lot of people don't like aluminum needles, but I really like them. I can knit really fast with them. I get stuff done so much faster with aluminum needles than with any other, like aluminum and steel needles, than any other type. I like bamboo. They're nice, but they kind of slow me down a little bit. The plastic needles, especially the flexible ones, they slow me down a little bit. 
but no needles they help and so I got these needles in the picture I don't feel like the picture and I don't know if maybe I was just so excited to, to get them that I didn't read the description but I know the picture for sure didn't depict that they were this long <laughs> so you can see these are these are pretty long needles they're like let's see they're like over 12 like 14 inches long <laughs> And I bought these because I wanted to make hats. I can still do it. It's just going to be kind of fin like awkward. And I don't necessarily want to send them back because I know I can still use them. And it would take forever to get them back. And they were so cheap that it almost doesn't seem worth it. But I have some sizes that I didn't have before in double pointed needles. So that's nice. I have an entire set. Including the little ones. It's just... I mean, I guess I can use these for knitting sweaters in the round, but that's not why I bought them, you know? So I'm kind of bummed that they ended up being so long. But, again, they were so cheap, I guess I can't complain. Now I want to show you some yarn that I recently acquired that I really like. My giant container. <laughs> so, firstly, I have my Premier Wool Free Sock Yarn. Let's see. <clears throat> this yarn is, let's see, it is 93% acrylic and 7% PBT. And I really like it because it feels like silk to me. It's really silky and smooth and soft, but it's pretty stretchy. I've actually knit a pair of socks with this before in the past. Let me grab those really quick. So I've actually knit a pair of socks with this yarn before, actually in this colorway. It's called Utah. And the, it, the socks are very comfortable. And they're actually somewhat cooling, which is nice because I'm someone who has a, a very high body temperature most of the time. I'm usually hot, like I'm hot right now in this thin cardigan, but I have to wear it because I'm wearing a camisole. <laughs> but these socks are really nice. They're really comfortable, good for someone who whose feet are usually too hot to wear any type of thick sock, these end up working out really well for that. And so I've got two, let's see, I got a lot of this yarn actually because it was on clearance at Hobby Lobby. Oh, it was on sale, I think. Are they on clearance or on sale? Anyway, it was really cheap. It was really cheap. It's like a whole bunch of it, let's see. Yep, so I have four kinds of the Utah colorway and then I have two of the I think this is Grand Canyon no Phoenix of no, the Phoenix colorway and I really like this one too I'm really excited to see how they turn out I think that since my first pair using that yarn was you know were ankle socks because I used one kind of yarn for the entire pair of socks I think if I remember correctly um, I'm going to try, now that I have four of one color, I'm going to try to do longer socks and see, because I've never knit socks that were any higher than maybe five to seven inches above the ankle, and so I want to see if I can knit some longer socks, maybe even right under the knee or right above the knee, and we'll see how that goes. might look kind of funky with this pattern, so we'll see. I don't know. I just like to experiment with my knitting. The next yarn that I recently acquired, I have to go grab them. So... The next yarn that I recently acquired was actually a gift from my mom, and she didn't know that I was avoiding buying like the cheaper, lower quality yarns because I have so much of it and I don't like the way it tends to knit up. So she bought me this Red Heart Mistletoe. She bought me a large bag of it. I have one, two, three, I have six kinds of this yarn now and it's real it's actually a really pretty color I'm gonna lie I like the color it's like it's it's almost fluorescent it plays tricks with your eyes because it looks red orange in some angles and it looks red in others I really like the color on this but I don't necessarily know what I'm gonna do with it <clears throat> I might since I've been practicing crocheting I might work on a crochet blanket with that 
I can see myself knitting baby hats and donating them. Or like preemies, you know, preemies and little babies who just need hats. And So we'll see. I don't know, I have a lot of that yarn, so I need to do something with it. <laughs> because that's, it's going to take up a lot of space. Anyway, so, I don't want my podcast in the future. I know this is kind of a little train wreck. Thank you for sticking with me through this if you've watched this far. But, um, I don't want my podcast in the future to be all that long. I want them to be less than an hour. But we'll see. Like, as I have more things going on, it might end up, it might be inevitable that they are an hour or more long. But I really wanted to try to make them just a little bit shorter so that I'm not taking up all of your time, you know. Or if you don't have the time to invest in the hour, you might, you know, just end up avoiding them altogether. And I, I, I like the idea of there just being like a quick little podcast just to show you what people are doing because I like to watch a lot of podcasts but they're so long that I can't watch as many as I'd like to. I, I really like to see what people have made and I like how excited they get about the projects that they finished. It's such a nice feeling and I don't know very many people who knit. Most of my friends that I know of any, I think I have three or four friends who work with who do any needle crafts at all and <clears throat> it's usually crochet and sewing which I do a little bit of both, but I really, my main thing is knitting. And so I like to watch knitting podcasts. It's almost like a pen pal who knits. It's almost like having a, a friend across the country or across the world because there are podcasters from all over the world showing off their projects and it's just so nice. I, I really enjoy that. But I, even though I do want my podcast to be pretty short, I feel like this is maybe a little too short. So I thought it would be fun to share a funny story about me not, me being kind of stubborn, I guess, <laughs> if you will. I'm a Taurus, so I guess we're supposed to be stubborn. But anyway, I, when I knit my first sock, I did not believe that the little amount of, I was told to cast on with the little amount of the very thin yarn that I was using, I just didn't believe that they would be able to make a sock that I could fit. And so, me being stubborn, I cast on a ridiculous amount of stitches. I don't remember how many this is, but I ended up making this giant man sock. <laughs> it's like a stocking. I haven't taken it out because I, I don't know, I guess it's funny to think about. It's a funny story. But, um... <laughs> I knit, the, I knit the sock out of the red heart yarn, I remember that, I don't remember the color, it's red heart, heart and soul. I think it was one of their Christmas yarns, I don't remember the name of the color, but anyway. Um, I knit this again when I used to work at Joann's, and I just was so, <laughs> it's so funny to me now, and it's also nice to look back at your old projects and see how, how much your knitting skills have improved because my knitting stitches are pretty uniform now but back then they were kind of irregular that you'd have some larger stitches and then you'd have some smaller you'd have like these big wide stitches that almost look like a hole in your work <laughs> and although I will say my decreases actually looked pretty nice for being a novice kind of I don't know these ones look kind of wonky but another thing that <laughs> was funny was that I was, I've always knit socks on double pointed needles and so I knit these socks on double pointed needles and when it was time to decrease the toe, instead of just decreasing on two ends, I was, I thought I had to decrease on each, the end of each double pointed needle if that makes any sense. So I had a very strange looking toe and I didn't understand what was going on. I was like, oh wait a minute, yeah that was. I actually attempted to knit socks pretty early in my knitting career. I didn't really know what I was doing, and it's funny to think about that. And it's nice to be able to admit that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. You know, in a world where everybody's supposed to know everything, it's nice to say, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Actually, before I end, I can show off just one more item that I 
acquired recently that was also really cheap but I'm really happy with. So the other two items I weren't necessarily I wasn't necessarily happy with, but I'm really happy with these. So from that same website, I ordered a pack of I mean, the zippers, um, assorted colored zippers, and these were also pretty cheap, but they're perfect. They were so cheap that I was almost skeptical of their quality, but I bought them anyway just out of curiosity, I guess. And oh, sorry about that noise. And I'm really happy with the way they. They are. They're, they're nice. They're really nice colors. There's no fraying, no odd shaped zipper teeth or anything like that. It doesn't seem like any of the handles are going to come off. They zip up and down just fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm very happy that I found them for the price I did. I think this bag was under $10, if I remember correctly, for like kind of like a wholesale website. And it got purple. Dark blue, light blue, dark pink, light pink, green, yellow, and red. Oh, and some white ones. Oh. So I have a lot of different colors. I don't remember how many is in here, but I have quite a few zippers, and I wanted to start making more project bags. Um, the project bag that my drawstring camisole, if I can find it, oh, here it is, my drawstring camisole that I showed you first. That was one of my first sewing projects, so it's kind of rough looking, but I have since then made some things that I'm pretty confident in, so now I want to try and start making more, because I really like, I really like sewing. And so I can show you a project bag that I've made that I'm actually proud of. It's not to say that I'm not proud of the other one. I, I'm proud of what I do, whether or not it's, a, it's perfect, because I just, I'm not... I'm a perfectionist in some areas, but not when it comes to crafting, unless it's like a garment. I want my garments to look nice, but with like things like project bags, if I'm making them for myself, if they look kind of hand-made like this, I mean, it's okay. It works. It does its job. But I'm really proud of this project bag that I made. I really like this fabric. <clears throat> I originally bought this fabric to make a backpack for my brother, and I had enough left over to do this this little panel of, of, of fabric right here. It's really cool. I haven't seen it since. I bought this again years ago when I worked at Joann's. It's like, it's um, superhero comic books contrasting. They're, they're kind of, they're piled on each other. It almost looks like somebody just dropped a bunch of comic books on the ground. They're all Marvel. And my brother actually really liked his backpack. He wore it until it ripped twice. I had to fix it twice, so I was really proud because I think that was the first item that I made that anybody used consistently, and I was really proud of that. But it's a really big project. I'm currently keeping it. I'm not. I'm not going to count this as a work in progress because I'm probably not going to finish it because I don't have enough yarn to finish it. I. I guess I overestimated how much yarn I had, and again when I went back to get more. They had discontinued it because I bought this. I buy large quantities of yarn with no intention of using it for anything specific. And then I start, I get the idea to make something, maybe even years later. And then I go back and it's not, you know, it's not continued anymore. And I need to be more careful with that because I know that you can check the yarn label and see how much yarn you need based on the yardage. But I, sometimes I get so excited that I forget to do it. But I really like this yarn. I'm sad that it's discontinued. It's the Loops and Threads Urban. And I was using it to make the brick sweater, which is a really nice, just, just kind of crew neck, um, raglan sweater. And it's, it's so soft. I really like this yarn. It feels, it doesn't feel like acrylic. It, I think it's a blend. I don't know if I have the label still. I don't think I do, so I don't know exactly what the fiber content is, but I know it does have some acrylic in it, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels so nice, and it knits up so nice. I love, and it's also, it's, it's kind of like a beige twisted with a white color, as you can see. And I'm just really sad they're not making it anymore, because I would buy so much of this. I want a sweater knit of this, a cardigan, I want a blanket, <laughs> bodysuit everything. <laughs> it's 
that's so nice. But anyway, I'm, I'm probably gonna rip that out and try and make something smaller that I can use for myself because I don't want to just have that beautiful yarn that I love so much just sitting in a bag forever, <laughs> not serving its purpose. Hmm. I thought, you know, also, I know this is kind of unusual, but I think it might be interesting to show things that need to be repaired on my podcast. Because <clears throat> I have a few things that I need to repair. Well, one in particular, a sock that I knit for my mom and a yarn that I bought years ago when I worked at Joann's, which was also discontinued. Really like this yarn. It was called Spring Fling. It's a Deborah Norville yarn. But the last, the time, last time she washed it, she pulled it out of the... Well, she hand washed it, I think. She either hand washed them or she washed them on delicate in a garment bag. I can't remember. But either way, she hung them up to dry. I found them. I put them on the sock lockers to dry so that they would have their shape still. And then when we came back to them, they had this huge hole in them. I'm holding the stitches with random sharp things that I found <laughs> in my strange pincushion. My Beretta's pork and beans. <laughs> anyway. I'm, I'm holding the stitches with just random pointy things that were on top of my pincushion. And um, I know that I can find videos on how to repair holes like this, but I'm very nervous to do it. I do have yarn left over from that project that I considered making a, the granny stripe sock blanket that so many of my favorite knitters are making, but I, don't, I, I guess I, I mean I should use this to make the sock. I think the problem is that these socks, twin socks, are not just sisters, they're twins. And so I'm kind of sad at the idea that I might not be able to keep that up. I don't know. So we'll see. But I do need to repair this. And I think I'll end it here before I start rambling. <laughs> well, I've been rambling, but you get it. Anyway, thank you for watching if you stuck through this far. I promise next episode will be a little better put together and a little nervous and, you know, kind of edgy because this is my very first podcast and I'm not necessarily uh, the best on video. It took me a long time to set this up. I have like a little Polaroid tripod uh, with a cell phone attachment. I'm filming this on my cell phone. It's sitting on a shoebox, so... Uh, my setup is a little funny, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, then stay, stay tuned for another episode. I will try to do these every two weeks because I think that would be enough time to have some new works in progress every time I sit down to record so you're not seeing the same things over and over. Or if you do, you'd see a significant amount of progress on them, which is always nice to see. Anyway. I'm sitting in front of an open window and I have a brick wall behind my house and this huge lizard just ran by. Uh, anyway, <laughs> if, if you'd like, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is by underscore Deneen by Deneen on Twitter at by Deneen, but no underscore no symbols, just by Deneen. And you can follow me on Pinterest at knits and by Deneen or Ravelry at Knits in by Deneen. You can also visit my blog, which is www.knitsinbydeneen.com. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.